What are you willing to do for a career? I never put my career first. I looked at people who sweat all their lives at work, and by old age they are unhappy, because in pursuit of money and fame they did not acquire the most important thing, family. I believe that there should be a balance between career and family, so I chose my future wife with similar views. But what was my disappointment when I realized that I had made a mistake in choosing a wife? My name is Jose Fry, and I am 26 years old. My wife, Alice, works as a secretary for one of the editors at a fashion magazine. I have always admired her passionate approach to her job, but lately I have been worried that she is too caught up in her career, forgetting about our family and, more importantly, her health, especially now that she is pregnant. Alice, are you sure you need this job? I think you should slow down and think about the health of our child, I told her one evening, when she came home looking tired but happy. Jose, I feel great. This job is my passion, and I can't just give it up. Besides, it's a great opportunity for me to climb the career ladder, she replied, smiling at me. But I saw a spark of stubbornness in her eyes. I couldn't understand her. For me, family always came first, and work was just a means to provide a good future for our child. But Alice saw it differently. Her ambitions and desire to make a mark in the fashion world seemed more important to her than our family happiness. My concerns grew when, in the second month of her pregnancy, Alice announced that she had been invited to do a topless shoot for one of the magazines. This is my chance to shine, Jose. I can't miss it, she said, and I expressed my disapproval of the idea. But Alice, what will people say? Do you really want our future child to know that its mother participated in such shoots? My words were full of genuine care, but she brushed them off. People will always talk, Jose. I'm doing this for us, for our future. I see nothing wrong in using my beauty and talent to advance my career. Her response stunned me. I understand when we were in our first year of living together and money was tight, but now what? You promised me that you would stop working once you got pregnant, and yet you are aiming higher, I said with hurt in my voice. You don't understand me. I didn't see any prospects before, but now I have a real chance, she stubbornly said and this infuriated me, leading to a serious argument. I was completely dissatisfied with her decision to participate in such shoots and not planning to quit, but I hoped that in a few months, she would quit on her own, at least because it would be hard for her to keep working while being pregnant. I decided to give Alice an opportunity to participate in a photo shoot. I had a plan. If she didn't quit her job later on, I would send the magazine photos to her parents, so they would know what their daughter was doing and the kind of content she was involved in. They would definitely not like it. One evening, when I returned home from work, Alice greeted me with news that was supposed to surprise me. Jose, I want you to be the first to know. I've been promoted. I'm not just an assistant anymore. I've become the face of the magazine. This is my chance to make a name for myself as a professional model, she said, beaming with happiness. I was stunned. How... How did this happen? You've only participated in one shoot. It was that very shoot that showcased what I'm capable of. My photos became so popular that the editors decided I'm the perfect fit for the magazine's image. This is my chance, Jose. I can make a change. And even after having a baby, I can continue working and developing. During the pregnancy, they'll only need my face. Her voice sounded confident, but I couldn't share her enthusiasm. Alice, what about after the baby is born? Are you ready to leave our child for work? I asked, feeling a tightness in my chest at the thought that she might prefer her career over our family. I'm not planning to leave our child. I just want him to have a mother who not only cares for the family but also succeeds in her professional field. I want to be an example for him, she replied. We both fell silent. I didn't know how to argue with Alice. I loved her and wished her the best, but I couldn't understand how she planned to balance being a mother and the face of a fashion magazine. Deep down, I feared that our family and our child would not be her top priority. I couldn't help admiring her strength and determination, yet at the same time, I was scared for our future, especially since Alice often complained about her boss, who had no intention of promoting her, and if previously Alice returned from work sad and tired, now she came home as if from a celebration. I know you're worried, Jose, but I promise you everything will be fine. I can balance work and family. 
You believe in me, right? She asked me in the evening. Of course I believe in you, Alice. I just want to make sure we don't forget what's most important, our child and our family, I replied, trying to hide my anxiety. As time went on and Alice's pregnancy progressed, I tried not to argue with her anymore, hoping everything would sort itself out. Surprisingly, her career at the magazine flourished, and she truly became the face everyone talked about. Her face graced the covers, and she often participated in various events and shoots. All this time, I supported her as best as I could, but felt that the distance between us was growing. When the time came for the birth of our son Charles, I hoped that the arrival of a child would bring us closer together. She even independently decided to put her projects on hold for a couple of months. For a moment, it seemed like everything was heading in the right direction. Alice was a wonderful mother, and I could see how much she loved our son. However, soon after Charles's birth, Alice returned to her work with even more dedication. She stopped breastfeeding and spent ten hours a day in the office, sometimes even more. If she had any free time, she devoted it to intense workouts in the gym, leaving the care of the child to my parents. With each passing day, I grew angrier and more upset about her absence at home. We lacked time together as a family, and what's worse, our intimate life suffered. It had been 98 days without intimacy, and this seriously started to worry me. It was the longest period I had gone without sex in my conscious life. To my surprise, Alice's parents approved of her activities and initiative. Her mother had also wanted to pursue a similar path in her youth, but the birth of Alice made her lose her shape and say goodbye to her modeling career. Therefore, her mother was on her side. Alice, we need to talk. I feel like we're drifting apart. Don't you think you're spending too much time at work? I asked her one evening when Charles was already asleep. She looked at me with tired eyes. Jose, I'm doing all this for us, for our future. I can't stop now when I have so many opportunities while I'm still young, she replied. Then I decided to bring up the topic of sex, which we hadn't had for three months, hoping she would realize that she was indeed overworking. But instead, she did me a favor, and we had sex which I couldn't finish because I wasn't in the mood. My doubts about Alice's work were dismissed. Her parents, friends, everyone told me to back off and not hinder her progress. I couldn't deny that I was even envious of her because her income was higher than mine, allowing her to hire a professional nanny to care for our son. One day, she even told me that if I wanted to spend more time with the family, I could quit my job. All of this was seriously stressing me out. It felt like I had proposed to a completely different woman. Undoubtedly, I was happy about her successes, but all my principles and beliefs were shattered to pieces by her activities. When our son turned two, Alice had gotten into great shape and was participating more and more in revealing photo shoots. While she used to heed my opinion, now I felt like a dull mouse to her, insignificant and unimpressive. But all that was trivial compared to the real fear I felt when I couldn't see any of my features in my son. When our parents visited, we would compare who Charles resembled more. His eyes were Alice's, so were his ears, but everything else seemed neither mine nor hers. My parents told me that Charles was still young and that he would look exactly like me when he grew up. But I had my doubts. My doubts were there because I didn't feel a father's love for Charles. I don't know how to describe it. But he seemed like a stranger to me, not mine, as terrible as that sounds, but that was the reality. My doubts about Charles only grew with each passing day. Thoughts that he might not be my son started to overwhelm me. I decided to conduct a DNA test in secret from Alice to dispel my doubts or confirm my worst fears. I took Charles to the hospital under the guise of a checkup, and we had the test done. The test results came back a few days later, while Alice was on another work trip shooting some advertisement. My heart stopped when I opened the envelope. The child was not mine. This discovery hit me like a thunderbolt out of a clear sky. All my fears and doubts were confirmed in the most horrifying way. I didn't know how to proceed. I had two options, either to leave everything as it was, living a lie and deception, or to expose my wife's infidelity. Alice had made quite a lot of money over her three years of intensive work. We renovated the house, bought two cars, and I realized that in such a case, I could make a good sum from the divorce. I undoubtedly loved Alice, but I would have preferred a modest life to a luxurious one with a skeleton in the closet. 
It was a real shock to me. I always dreamed of a small house, two children, a son and a daughter, and a faithful wife who would always be waiting for me at home. What happened to my life over the last three years didn't match my sincere desires, so I realized I needed to act. My first impulse was to confront Alice and demand explanations, but I realized I needed to speak with Thomas Galvin, Alice's boss, first. I suspected that Alice had slept with him to get an opportunity to become a model. For some reason, I hadn't thought of this immediately, given Alice had been working as a secretary for a long time with no prospects for advancement. Suddenly, she became pregnant, seemingly by accident and possibly unaware of the father's identity, and after that, her career took off. A coincidence? I think not. Three days later, Alice was supposed to return from a shoot with her boss, so I waited. When the time came, I gathered all my strength and went to Thomas's main office. My heart was pounding in anticipation of the confrontation. As I entered his office and closed the door behind me, Thomas greeted me with surprise. He was surprised because no one gets through to him easily, so I had pretended to be his relative and spun a tale to the girl at the reception desk. Who are you? How did you get in here? He asked, beginning to reach for the intercom, presumably to ask his secretary what I was doing there. I quickly approached, grabbed his hand away from the button. I want to talk to you, I started, trying to remain calm. About a model. Her name is Alice. What exactly do you want to know about her? He asked. I want to know which scumbag she's been sleeping with, I said seriously. Oh, I take it you're her husband? He asked. You're quick on the uptake, I said, noticing him reaching for his phone. I snatched the phone from him quickly, and he started to protest. What do you think you're doing? I haven't allowed myself much, unlike you, I said. What do you want? He asked hysterically. I want to know the truth. Did you sleep with my wife? I asked bluntly. What makes you think that? He asked, and I realized he wouldn't tell me anything, so I punched him in the face. He started screaming for help, so I had to hit him again. Then I took some duct tape and sealed his mouth so he could scream no more. I unbuckled his belt and used it to tie his hands. He sat in the chair, and I leaned over him and said, If you're not willing to tell me the truth about what happened between you and my wife, I'll find out in another way, but let me warn you, it will be extremely painful for you, I said, and he started to mumble. I peeled the duct tape off him. Wait, wait, please, I honestly don't know what you're talking about. I swear I haven't slept with your wife. Are you willing to take a DNA test? I asked, seeing genuine surprise on his face. What test? Why? I don't get it. Are you joking, or do you really not understand the situation? My wife got the chance to participate in a shoot three years ago, even though she had no prospects before. Also, during that period, she got pregnant. And two years later, I find out that my child is not my child at all. I said, that's a tough situation. I'm sorry that happened to you, but I really have nothing to do with it. If you want, I can take the test, but in a couple of days, I have a busy schedule right now, he said. We're going now, I said threateningly. All right, let's go, he said. Thomas and I left the office and drove to the nearest hospital. When he agreed to come with me, I began to doubt that he had any connection to the child, but just to be sure, we still did the test. He promised me that he would not tell my wife about this incident and wished me luck. A few days later, Thomas called me and asked me to come to his office. I rushed over at the first opportunity, knowing that if the result was positive, I would confront him right there in his office. Upon entering his office, Thomas handed me the results, which showed that his DNA did not match my son's. This meant that he was not the biological father of Charles, and I was at a loss. I'm very sorry that this has happened to you, it's an extremely unpleasant situation, he said sympathetically, and I found myself apologizing to him because I realized I had made a mistake and Thomas was not my wife's lover. I'm of course glad that we resolved the situation, but if it weren't for my male solidarity, I would have had you behind bars a long time ago for what you did, he said with a laugh, acknowledging the awkwardness of my situation. In that case, can you help me somehow? Maybe you've seen something suspicious with Alice. Maybe she was constantly with someone, or someone was constantly with her, I asked. Thomas scratched his head. The only person around her was her producer, David. A unique guy, but very talented. I don't understand why you didn't go to him directly. 
It was news to me that Alice was working with a producer. I thought Alice was working with you. She did work with me, as my secretary, brought me coffee and all. Then our producer noticed her and suggested her as a model. And that's how she became a model, he explained. I see, thank you for the information. Where can I find this David now? I inquired. Nowhere, why would you need him? To go and leave him disabled for life? It's not worth it, especially since our magazine actively collaborates with David, and I don't want to lose such a valuable person. So if I find out something happened to him, it won't be good for you. This is business. I recommend you better talk to your wife, he concluded, and showed me out of the office. I promised Thomas that I would not harm David. Then I decided to divorce Alice before things went too far, but I intended to leave with a substantial compensation for such deceit. The next day, after talking with Thomas, I contacted a lawyer and explained everything that was happening and what I wanted to achieve. Since Alice suspected nothing and her birthday was planned in three weeks in France, which we were supposed to celebrate, I asked for her cards, saying I wanted to make her a surprise for her birthday. She was surprised as the amount was not small, around $150,000, but I promised her she would be thrilled, especially since she had nothing to fear. I also sold my car, which she had gifted me almost a year ago, and transferred all the money from our joint accounts to my accounts and cashed them out. A week and a half later, Alice noticed everything that had been happening and decided to be the first to speak to me in the evening. What's happening? Where's your car? And where did the money from our account go? She asked. This, dear, is your payback, I said. Payback? Honey, what are you talking about? She asked and I laid the divorce papers on the table, as well as photos of her with her lover over the past weeks. I had to hire a private detective. What is this? What's happening? She asked. Yeah, not the Alice I married, I said with a sigh. How is this possible? She exclaimed. Ah, uh, I didn't understand either. I suspected you of cheating, but I hoped until the end that at least the child was mine. But alas, it's your pathetic lover's child. Do you even realize what you've done? I said loudly. She began to cry and repent. I love you really, it means nothing. She tried to take my hand, but I pulled away and said my last words. So I'll move out during the legal process. You need to sign the papers. If you don't, it's not a problem. The court will consider my claim anyway, because this is outright fraud. You wanted me to raise another man's child. I honestly thought it was our child together, she said, choking on her own tears. I don't believe you. See you in court. I'm sorry I wasted so much time on you, but at least you have a successful career as a model. Now go kiss your producer and raise the child, I said, and left the house, packing up things that were already ready. We had the court case I had been waiting for so long, and Alice was losing on all fronts. Nobody believed that I had stolen money from her because I had cleverly hidden all the money and was not linked to it. In turn, Alice was obliged to pay me compensation and give up half of her house, as well as the car, which was hers. Additionally, the DNA test revealed that David is the biological father of Charles, and he paid me the entire sum I had spent on the child. Since I divorced Alice, all her relatives sided with her, while my parents said, It's not a big deal. The main thing is that you had a child and it doesn't matter from whom, which is nonsense. They all liked that Alice helped them financially. She bought new furniture for my parents' house and gave a car to her own parents. Therefore, after the divorce, everyone tried to persuade me to reconcile with Alice, but I changed my residence and phone number so no one could bother me. I decided to share my story on social media, and it gained significant attention. Alice began to be harassed online, and David's reputation started to suffer. Exactly three months after Alice and I divorced, David left her and ended their partnership, which was crucial for Alice's large advertising campaigns. Thus, she not only lost a man, but also her source of income, as her earnings were directly dependent on David's work. Alice couldn't find a new producer because her money was running out, and she still needed to support the child. If previously, when she was just starting her career, I could take care of the child now, eight months later, Everyone turned their back on her, even her parents, because she stopped helping them financially. I couldn't understand why Alice changed her views so much. 
When we met, she was just a girl who wanted a family and a life where everything was enough for everyone. I couldn't understand when I lost her, but now it doesn't matter. Through my personal experience, I saw how money changed a person, and career and popularity turned her into a real monster who only cared about herself. I could excuse and even forgive her infidelity, but for her being pregnant with someone else's child, I could never forgive her for that. To me, this is the most despicable and terrible thing a cheating wife could do. I bought myself a house, trying to live modestly. I invested part of the money I managed to save in the bank for interest, and I kept the rest for living. I continue to work, realizing that I'm still young, and it's good that I realized everything in time. The worst thing would have been if I found out about it after 30 years of marriage. That's the end of the story. Write your opinion in the comments about this story. It will be interesting for us to read it. Also, do not forget to like and subscribe to our channel so as not to miss new, equally interesting and exciting stories. Good luck!